Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. There's been a lot of question, a lot of concern about a major topic already here within Modern Warfare 3, and that is actually Modern Warfare 2 weapons. As we know, for the first time in COD history, because Modern Warfare 3 is a direct sequel to MW2, we have all of our carry forward content. So all your operators from MW2 are now in MW3. All of your cosmetics, like your emblems and your calling cards and stuff, also available in MW3. And all of your weapons in MW2 and all the attachments you had for them, the camos like Ghoulie or your base camos, also all available in Modern Warfare 3. But obviously, Modern Warfare 3 plays vastly different from Modern Warfare 2. So are the MW2 guns that have carried forward into MW3 actually worth it? I wanted to test this a little bit more today and give you guys a general overview of what you should expect with these guns and if you should value, you know, still using some of your old setups from MW2. So as we get into the details, if you enjoy the video, if you find it helpful at all, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new here, you want to guarantee every single day you are up to date with all things going on in COD, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications join us on the road to 1 million subscribers now right away before you even you know put a mw2 weapon on one of your class setups we already know for sure that at their core modern warfare 2 weapons are already going to be different in modern warfare 3 because of what they detailed in a blog just before launch where they said the entire complement of the modern warfare 2 weaponry will receive a weapon balancing pass by sledgehammer games with additional adjustments after launch as needed so this does confirm that you know with season one two three four five we're going to see our usual weapon meta updates and MW2 weapons will be changed as well. But right away, starting, you know, now with day one as the game's launching, these aspects of MW2 weapons may be changed as part of this balancing pass. Maybe. Doesn't mean it's going to be changing for every single gun, but every gun could have this change. The damage ranges, whether that's the far distance range or the first drop off, whatever the case may be. The damage values is one that almost every gun's going to have changed because of the health differences in Modern Warfare 3 versus Modern Warfare 2. Uh, damage locational multipliers, whether they value headshots, upper body shots, limb shots. Obviously, in Modern Warfare 3, Sledgehammer's already confirmed that headshot multipliers are lowered in general, so you don't get those crazy fast gun fights because you hit one or two headshots and it just absolutely ends it right then and there uh, attachment value magnitudes which we can actually test very easily and then attachment pros and con values as well that's all set in stone as is and we can actually see some of that live in game already but as we get to that in just a moment first i want to do a little side by side of what mw2 weapons would look like in mw2 versus what they may look like in mw3 now so with this, what we're focusing on here is the behavior of these weapons. Now, I've got two different examples here, and they are brief. We could go super in-depth, and obviously, there's 77 weapons or something like that with MW2 and MW3 now. If we really wanted to see the distinct, detailed differences, it would take hours and hours and hours to do the manual testing. There will be data mine stuff eventually, and we'll have the direct stats to reference. But for the time being, this is the best we have. And very brief examples here give you a general overview. But as we saw in that patch note blog, they detailed the damage values were changing, the ranges were changing, the pros and cons were changing. They didn't mention anything about weapon behavior in terms of recoil and sway and whatnot. And MW2 weapons are obviously pretty rough with that stuff. There's a lot of visual recoil and visual noise with weapon smoke. Uh, there's a lot of sway that's a little bit random. The recoil patterns have some RNG involved in them, as opposed to MW3 guns, which are nothing like that. And that being said, that creates a distinct advantage if MW2 weapons feel so much worse and behave so much worse and more randomly than MW3 guns. So here initially we've got the Vaznev and we can just simply shoot these into walls and see what the recoil pattern is like in terms of visual noise and sway and whatnot. And we're about five and a half meters out on each wall here. And you can see the rate of fire here is going to be the same between the two. The sway is about the same. It's very brief here, but if you pay attention to it, uh, the sway really is not any different on a Iron Sight Vaznev with no attachments here, also at five meters, that's not gonna be too crazy. There's a little bit of sway, but there's not much. So initially here, what you can see is the rate of fire is the exact same on the base version of the Vaznev here. This is no attachments as mentioned. And when we go through and we shoot it, each weapon starts and stops basically at the same time as best as I could sync them up in Premiere, right? So when you shoot them, you're seeing the same exact rate of fire, basic same behavior there in terms of everything and then you get a look at the actual recoil patterns there now with the Vaznev on the left it's hitting the bricks so it's a little bit more noisy and muddy because of that but it's roughly the same up right left back up right this is a little bit more 
prominent in MW3 though. Now, if I go ahead and I hide the face cam, it's a little bit more visible there. If we go through and we watch this clip play through yet again, so you guys get a bit of a better look with it, you can see that they're roughly the same pattern still. So with no face cam coverage here, you get a little bit better look at the recoil patterns here. And again, the noise is gonna be roughly similar, just depends on what you're hitting as the background, but the visual smoke and everything there is roughly one-to-one. -one. It's not gonna be a major difference, at least in terms of gameplay in a public match. The firing range is obviously a little bit noisier, but even if we go through and we look at these patterns now, they are still roughly the same. Uh, MW3s does seem to have a bit more consistency. If there is any, it's very slight, and that's something to take note of as well. The second weapon we have here, you might have seen the preview, is gonna be the Cast Off 7.62, and for this, I simply wanted to have just one red dot sight. It's the Slimline Pro or whatever, because I wanted to shoot once and see what the sway was like here as well, because obviously aim sway is so prominent in uh, MW2 and on those guns. And when we look at the wall here and we look at our centerpiece, which is the shot that I put into each wall, the sway here for the first few seconds, again, is so minuscule in difference and minute that it's really hard to say definitively, okay, it's better in MW3 or it's worse. If anything, I would say MW3s on the right here is a tad bit less sway, but it is really hard to tell. And I mean, you can judge for yourself and let me know in the comments below, but if I play it again, just briefly here, to me, visually, MW3s looks a tad bit less uh, in terms of sway there. But again, if we go through and we shoot we look at the recoil patterns here. The visual noise still seems somewhat significant in terms of recoil and the weapon shake there. And the patterns as well, we can see on the left side here, it's gonna be basically up and to the right, then it straightens out. This one on the MW3 version is actually a little bit different than the pattern that we have from MW2. So it does seem like they have changed this a little bit. And I wanted to shoot again on the MW3 version just to see if I'd get a similar pattern because as we know, with MW2 guns, the recoil patterns when you shoot them consistently actually differ because that weapon sway and the RNG there. But at least on MW3, when we go through and we shoot these, that actually seems to stay somewhat true. Those patterns are not exactly one-to-one -one, as you can see on the wall there. And even if I shoot it a third time, I wanted to shoot these side-by-side -side as well to show the visual noise. It's obviously less noisy shooting into uh, the air as opposed to the wall in the MW2 version. We end up seeing a pattern that again is very similar. We'll talk more about the SA here in just a minute or the SVA rather, but the three straight shots of the recoil of the 545, different patterns to an extent here and there. So that sway and that bit of RNG still seems to be applied to MW2 guns in terms of their behavior. Now, if you compare that behavior and that RNG to an MW3 gun here with the SVA, we're gonna go ahead and shoot this and I'll go ahead and turn the face cam back on. So and I'll block anything, uh, you know, here because we're full screen, obviously. But with the uh, SVA pattern here, if I go ahead and I shoot this a couple of times, obviously that first shot is that hyper burst. But then this pattern, when you compare it, is a little bit more consistent now there is some rng here you can see especially in the middle it seems like these bullets almost jump apart a little bit further whereas on the cast off here the 762 there at least again to me are a few more discrepancies there's this big jut in the middle here where it goes right and then left and then back it's not as significant there it's a little bit earlier here there's this larger gap in this third pattern whereas this is a little bit tighter there are some differences but it's not as noticeable so i think it's a safe bet to say just based off the initial like quick test there again you could go crazy in depth if you wanted to with every single gun and see okay this is barely different this is a little bit more different but on the broad overview and i've done a little bit more you know off screen just to you know get more data and more analysis to have the statements here it seems like if there are changes with the MW2 behavior in MW3 now with those weapons, they are very minor at best. And the real changes are gonna be what they mentioned there in those notes in terms of damage values and whatnot. And one thing we can actually check to see in terms of changes here is the attachment data as they mentioned. So for instance, on the Razorback, you might recall, sim.gg has the data mine stats of all those attachments from MW2. And on the Razorback, if we go through and we look at the compensators, the Komodo Heavy compensator here, if I scroll through and I find it, it actually on MW2, according to Sim, gives you a 40 millisecond increase in your ADS time, a 7% uh, gun kick control for vertical recoil, and 20 25% gun kick control for horizontal because the detailed stats we can actually now go through and see this and once more if I go through and I hide the face cam so you guys can get the full details here we now see a 27% increase in horizontal control we get a 7% increase in vertical control and it's a slightly slower 18% decrease 
in that overall ADS speed. It said it was adding 40 milliseconds to that ADS time. It's 260 with the Komodo Heavy. If we don't equip that and we go through, and we look at the detailed weapon stats, it's 220. So that, for instance, is an attachment you could use on a multitude of weapons from MW2 and MW3. Hey, everyone. If you're like me right now and you are grinding out Modern Warfare 3, leveling up all the new weapons, going for the new mastery camos, or you just happen to be looking at screens for long periods of time, whether it be for work, school, or just casually gaming, do yourself a favor and pick up a pair of game advantage glasses you all obviously see me wearing these every single face cam video they are truly the most essential part of my day-to-day -day setup and if you want to get a pair for yourself they offer prescription and regular lenses plenty of different frame options and colorways and code immortal will get you a nice little discount at checkout link for that will be down in the description below but what if we look at something that's not necessarily a universal attachment like the tac 2l uh barrel here it says it's going to increase your hip fire accuracy your velocity and range and according to sim.gg it's going to help our velocity velocity by 77 it's going to also help out with our damage range by about 28.028 so if we go through and we look at the advanced stats here 28 percent increase on that effective damage range the velocity is up to 794 and base it was 720 so it's close not exact but definitely close with that 10 percent increase that it's offering there uh on sim for instance in mw2 for the recoil control uh cons here it's adding 2.4 percent in terms of recoil control horizontal and vertical and on sim.gg they have listed 0 0.02 or 0.2 percent so maybe some slight slight differences there overall so some things have been adjusted in minor ways some things haven't been adjusted at all again though the big things there are going to be things like damage obviously because that has to be able to compete and when you go to the firing range you're going to see yes the razorback is going to take you know three headshots to knock down that first dummy and if we were to change our loadout to let's say an mcw and wait for this to come back one two three headshots with that so there are similarities and there's a level of competitiveness there that'll keep the mw2 weapons competitive but ultimately we also got to be real here at the same time activision is money first right and we already have the mw2 guns even if you're a free-to-play player in warzone you've probably leveled the majority of them mw3 guns are tied to the new game the 70 dollars dlc right they want you to spend time on multiplayer that's why we've got the armory challenges they want you to buy mw3 multiplayer so you can level the guns and use them here i'd be very surprised if this is a trend that continues especially into warzone where as it stands now it already seems like mw3 weapons from a handling standpoint are going to be a little bit more preferred than say the razorback here it's easy to use but as we saw there's not drastic differences from how these weapons behaved in mw2 versus mw3 now with those new weapons being so low recoil so straightforward so easy to use uh that is going to be the big difference there i feel like in terms of feel mw3 weapons are going to win in that category whereas ttks there's going to be a level of competition mw2 weapons will hold their own but they're going to be more effort required higher risk higher reward in a sense long story short here are mw2 guns good in mw3 it really comes down to player feel and player skill if you can fry with mw2 guns and you can control them easily they will be able to compete just fine with mw3 guns but there are certain advantages that mw3 guns will have in terms of handling and feel also i mean let's face it the meta is probably going to end up being more mw3 weapons over time because those balanced out mw2 guns if they're taking away from sales or bundles of mw3 you know that's not going to promote the business aspect of activision that they want in the cod side if there is not a distinct reason to want to use mw3 guns and buy multiplayer then that's obviously not helping in sales I imagine that MW3 guns are going to continue to have certain advantages throughout the year or be a little bit more optimal in certain areas. That's just enough to want you to favor those weapons more than MW2, but they're certainly usable. Long story short. That being said, that is going to wrap things up. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, drop a like on it. It would be really appreciated. And if you're new here, you want to guarantee you're up to date with all things going on in COD, be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I'll catch you later. Peace out.